Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So this was one we did last night before bed, which for us comes early as we rise before the sun rises. Indeed, we do. We do. We do. Blinking lights in people's blood. I kid you not. Uh, yes, a Patreon exclusive. Usually there's a Patreon exclusive going up every three or four days, definitely at least once a week. And and don't forget, we want to say a huge thank you to D as our new Patreon member. Thank you, D. Absolutely. Thank you, D. We couldn't do it without you guys. Did you see that? Did you notice that light? This is in Toledo, Ohio. Watch this. Look at this. It's just sitting there. <laughs> Boom. Okay, uh, the human spotted us. Let's get out of here, George. Yeah, no, it's another special kind of comet. Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. It's, it's a comet. It's the special stop. It's called a stop and go comet. That's the science name. Yeah, it's a meteor. Yes, it's it's a stop and go meteor. <laughs> you can't make this up. <laughs> oh man, they they have been hiding so much from us for so many years and now it's all going to start to come out of course it'll come out with a spin in a way that they are trying to do their damage control pentagon official claims mothership ufo operating drone swarms over u.s bases a senior pentagon official has confirmed that ufo motherships were spotted releasing swarms of smaller air aircraft over multiple U.S. military installations. This revelation comes amid reports of unexplained drone incursions over Langley Air Force Base last December. You know, some of those drones uh, they were saying was 100 feet long. Wow. You know, I mean, what that's a big drone. That's not a little drone. Uh, the fast-moving craft displayed flashing lights and evaded anti-drone defenses. Chris Mellon, a former Defense Department official says the brazenness, range, and resistance to countermeasures of the objects was confounding. Similar intrusions have occurred over Skunk Works facility in California. In response, NASA was called in to assist with imaging the mysterious craft using its high-altitude WB-57F plane, suggesting the government was truly baffled by the incidents. While the origin remains unknown, some experts speculate the objects may be from a local source, given their conspicuous behavior, seemingly meant to taunt authorities. However, the Pentagon officials' confirmation of mothership UFOs adds a remarkable new dimension to these national security breaches. Yeah, very, very interesting stuff indeed, is it not? You know, there's... This is a big, big buzz, uh, and there's been a lot of releases out there of information in case, you know, you, you haven't been piecing them together. There's tons. There's so much information out there. But as we know, this this phenomenon is, is re it's as old as Homo sapiens. It, it, it actually predates Homo sapiens, and actually there's technology buried in, in layers of earth and rock that is more advanced than what we have today. Then you have a NASA filmmaker claiming that telescopes on earth have discovered evidence of intelligent alien life and the announcement may come within the next month. Yeah, he's, he's quite a character. Uh, we are looking at his YouTube channel. Um, very funny. It looks like he's living in a hobbit hole. Uh, he's, yeah, very interesting guy to say the least. And this, this, again, has to do with some signals that are not of a natural origin. There's been a lot of things, countless, countless things over the years that really um, all kind of get washed away and poo-pooed, and, and yet the world still believes in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. And, you know, yet the, the obvious thing should be that in all of this, expanse of all these little lights we see in the in the sky and you know, that we're all alone that's just an impossibility but if you go back to what the indigenous people knew the indigenous people all across uh what we you know recognize as earth 
will tell you that many of them will even say, well, our tribe comes from there. And then others will say, well, our tribe comes from there. Different places, because life was seeded on this planet from many different places. And here you have Elon saying, let us venture among the stars. And Elon, whose name and his middle name, too, is all a reference to his position in this big drama, because it is a drama, it is all theater, at least as far as, you know, the power structure on the planet. They have the script all laid out for you and us, and yet we can see what they are doing. Everything is being revealed in this time. And J.D. Vance says, I believe the destiny of this country is to conquer the stars. Whatever your view of Elon's politics, this is something that should inspire all of us. So you can see what is coming uh, next. It's so clear uh, that, yeah, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of contention with the whole uh, S election selection process. Yeah, ultimately, what's going to be in place is going to be in support of Israel. Because Israel plays the main part. It is the center focus of the next stage in this. But also introducing us to the fact that we're not alone. And at some point in time, I, I would suspect Elon would probably be the person that would be standing there saying, okay, well, you know, this is so-and-so and he's not from here. Mm -hmm. I know. And you can see the comments down here. They're kind of funny. One says, Elon will take us to Mars if Trump is elected. And then the guy right below him says, even if Trump isn't, we are still going to Mars. And to me, this speaks to destiny. It's like, yeah, it doesn't matter which road you take. We're still going to be going to the same place. It doesn't. I mean, the person elected has really no power over that at all. <laughs> That's the thing. So but it is it is it is kind of interesting, you know, those that came here to me I, I look at these uh beings and many of them are simply going home so i don't know i don't think it's a bad thing because i think they're going to go home and accidentally help to heal mars because th they've well they have this healer type of energy in them even if they don't know it they're moving up in vibration they are changing and after a while you just can't help it you just break out and you be a better version of you and they're bringing good energy that's what i see yeah there's the whole ascension process that changes everything and that is underway and that is being triggered by the sun and the number one reason why they always block out the sun all the time is because they don't want the light which is information interacting with our dna this is again why they terrified you of getting skin cancer and so lather on, protect yourself, just lather on all these harmful toxic chemicals all over your body to protect yourself from, oh, the nasty old sun, which is actually going to be triggering your DNA and bringing about a, uh, a, a spiritual and uh, emotional mental period of growth and expansion and understanding because our DNA has been tampered with. Look to the second chromosome. It's fused. That doesn't happen naturally. No, you know, there has been uh, a creation that's gone on, and there's also an evolutionary process, but it has nothing to do with the Masonic Darwinian type of uh, evolution that they're talking about, and they sell us on. When we see these lights over Langley Air Force Base, you know, uh, again, most of what we see literally is our own technology. But who is us when we say that? Our own. We're under the control of a power structure, uh, which is ultimately reptilian in nature. Yes, David Icke is, has been right this whole time in that, yeah, there is this dark reptilian, cold-blooded uh, control structure, which views humanity as simply, you know, it's a resource. And when Elon's saying, let's go back to Mars, guys, it's because he wants you to go dig. He wants you to do go back to the original, you know, program, which is, again, when you look at the Sumerian tales, it's humans were created as a slave race to work the mines. And isn't it interesting that we find all the lithium uh, in uh, Asheville? Yeah, no. And, and again, this, whether it's gold or whether it's lithium or whether it's other 
uh, raw minerals and, and things that both terrestrial and non-terrestrial beings would find uh, desirable to gather and to utilize, it's, it's always been the same old story. It's always been the same old story. And so many people don't know what they're saying when they have that little placard that says, as for my house, we will serve the Lord in the mines this is what's it's still going on in africa with little kids working the mines here you have october 12th 2024 a large fleet about the span of a football field was seen over new bedford boston october 13th dc reports of a large object crashing and for the past week alexa has been saying weird stuff about an armada of alien ships headed to earth yeah, there's all sorts of beings that have been here the entire time. Cindy and I used to live in a little patch of desert right across from Nellis Air Force Base. We would see them coming and going all the time. And it was like they came out of a portal and we could see them and they would cross an expanse of sky and then they would go into another portal and disappear. But she could remote view and see all different types of, of ET species. Uh, this guy here is just saying, what the heck is this? As you see, this is right across, uh, again, from the White House. This was when, when that event happened. And the police presence was just enormous. I mean, parking lots full of, of police just sitting there. It's like they were just told to gather here and we'll let you know what happened. And then nothing really uh, happened as far as them being sent around. But you could see this is just tons of people. Uh, no, this this was a, a major event. Again, uh, what Cindy saw was this was a ship that was uh, in error and having a hard time with our atmosphere and then was actually hit by one of ours. Again, there's many triangle and triangular shaped aircraft. Some are huge. I, back in 1998, with when my daughter was 10 years old, and I had uh, a little Jeep type vehicle, was having pizza at the beach in uh, Milford, Connecticut. And this triangle went overhead. We watched it for 20, uh, good 20 minutes. And it went over Milford, and it was emitting the light from the center point, but there was a white light in the center, and there were red lights on the edges. And it was moving along silently about three, three or four telephone poles high. I mean, it was low. And we watched it for 20 minutes, and it was silent. And it looked to be, I would say, two football fields across. It was huge. And, you know, it, it terrified my daughter, and she just wanted to get out of there. That was the first time I saw a, a triangle up close and personal, and it literally went straight over our heads. It was really a um, pretty amazing thing to see. So, you know, again, they're trying to cover this up, but there are many, many beings. It's not just the Galactic Federation versus the, you know, Draconian Alliance, or if you want to say the Orion group, you know, again, depending on what you're used to and, and what you've uh, studied or watched, uh, the law of one material. Sure, there is Blue Beam, Project Blue Beam, not, not to be confused with Blue Book. Uh, Project Blue Beam can do a lot of things. This is, again, over in Dubai. Uh, you think those, wheel, those whales are real? No, of course not. It's pretty wild, though. But at the same time, it's not all <laughs> blue beam. You know, this is to catch the people that understand that there was uh, something put out there like blue beam about holographic possibility of, of creating a, a second coming of Jesus, a rapture event, an alien invasion. The reality is, again, the alien invasion happened thousands of years ago. You are under the control of a dark alien group that uses humanity as a resource. This is literally um, a human farm, so to speak. Oh, and they use uh, very uh, interesting dark psychology to keep us under control, too. It's really important that they hold on to our belief system. And I don't know, 
it's kind of interesting how all of this stuff is coming out uh, at the the Pentagon about uh, a mothership and sending out probes and you know this this rock just so happens to come here and stay our little moon is going to stay here for a couple of months just park and just go away you know i mean all the information that's coming out now is well they're trying to cover it up to the best of their ability they're they're just doing their best uh you can't really ask any more of them than that you know what do you do when there's too many leaks in the dam and you just you know you're out of fingers and toes to plug the leaks and you know you're you just can't plug the leaks anymore it's going to get out and that's where we're at where we're not too far from complete breakthrough but for those who already understand uh, they don't need any more proof and there's a lot of people that have been used as con controlled opposition uh, a lot of people that really want to give us the whole story but they wouldn't be able to uh, stay in this 3d reality if they gave us the complete story um, many people know uh, Dr. Stephen Greer, and you know you have a lot of people at the same time that are just waiting for the door to open a little bit more so they could tell us all the truth because they would really be itching to tell us all the truth, but they, they, they can't or they end up like Phil Schneider. Uh, you know, again, uh, this is the type of thing that's happened throughout the years time and time again. But yet they're they're coming out and they're giving us more because they have no choice. This is the thing. They have no choice. There is a, a monumental effort afoot to awaken and to let humanity go to the next step, which means, you know, recognizing that we've never been alone on this planet we've never been alone they've always been here we've actually been controlled again by dark extraterrestrials uh, they are the ones that have limited our genetic um, capabilities they're the ones that have turned off if you ever wondered what what is all that junk dna again it, it's not really junk dna it's it's dna that for the most part has been made ineffective in its primary um, objectives and that's by the system when they again are spreading the fear of the sun it's because the sun really is a relay from the real god the real source the real creator and it's through the sun again that so much energy hits us and triggers our awakening the number one thing they're doing is it's not about climate change no it, it's 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 not even about terraforming for the you know reptilians or anything like that either it's really suppressing the ability of humans to perceive what's going on this is why you have the fluoridated water and so here you know he's just mentioning there's all you know unconstitutional yeah again it, it's all an illusion it's all an illusion self-governance no that's just to keep people placated and happy uh, there was a good little cartoon that was done all about that showing how they you know one plantation owner could actually say to the slaves hey you know what i'm going to free you not only that you're going to self-determine you're going to make your own decisions and you're going to choose the things that you want to do and how you want to run this plantation and they just were like really you are the best and they worked harder than ever because they thought they were in control but nothing really changed and they couldn't really step out of line or they still would get whipped this is exactly what's been going on planet earth you know the humans think that they're self-governing but they're not self-governing the nations of the world are created by the control system in order so humans are constantly fighting each other and obsessed with fighting each other so that they don't look up or even look inside the earth but when you look again to the hindu uh, scriptures the hindu books they clearly state like from the padma purana there are all these different species all around this uh, galaxy and our universe it, it talks about hun over a hundred thousand different humanoid species in our galaxy how do they know this well the thing is those beings that we called gods and demigods 
we understood they were all just extraterrestrials. There, there are extraterrestrials. Some of them have settled inside the Earth. Some of them live in cities under the oceans and in parts of the Earth that we're not allowed to go. We recognize that, that they're extraterrestrials. This is clearly stated in, in many of the Hindu scriptures. And the wars of the gods were the wars between different extraterrestrial groups. And yeah, the earth is one small little piece uh, in a much bigger pie. And the earth was taken over by the ones that we would view as demonic. And that is, is what has given you all the mainstream religions. Uh, and also even distorted uh, the traditions that understand what's really, really going on. So this, these wars of the gods that show technology that seems to be on a par or even more powerful than nuclear weapons and lasers. Yeah, there's one battle alone uh, that 1.4 billion people died in this one battle. And, you know, this is clearly, this is the whole thrust of the Mahabharata, which is a enormous um, scripture that is telling us all about how these battles happened. And when we look to the different Vimanas, the flying ships, it, it gives details about these. There's even diagrams on how these things were constructed. Again, all the different humanoid species, they, they always knew we were in an extraterrestrial, interdimensional, because it is interdimensional as well, we're right in the middle of an uh, enormous war that's been ongoing for the longest time. The little Dogon tribe over in Africa, they know, they understand this whole thing too, these, these masks. And we see the, the Hopi again talking about the ant people and everybody as far as the indigenous people on the globe knew the true story. This is why their ways have been squashed out. And yesterday was Columbus Day. <laughs> That's a celebration of the system conquering all those people that were at least free as far as sharing information openly. You know, it. it I read a book um, uh, recently, and it was it's it's done by a guy that specializes in uh, the mound building culture here in in the United States. And it was fascinating to see that some of the tribes here in the United States, right before the Europeans came, overthrew the control system that was in place. This control system that was in place here was led by a race of, uh, well, mostly the con <laughs> a race of giants. Uh, now, not all the giants are bad. Uh, there's a lot of different giants that we've been encountering uh, during our times. And in fact, in, in different ages, we are giants ourselves. And we've covered that on many different videos. Um, happy binge watching. Again, there's a lot of playlists there. But the leadership of many of the Native American tribes uh, was substantially larger in physical proportions than the rest of the tribe. And this is because, again, when you look to the stories, that leadership came down from the heavens. That leadership took over the tribes, integrated with the tribes. And, you know, it's that Genesis 6 story again. Took the most beautiful women as their own wives and took the first foods. You know, this is again where you are giving 10% uh, to the church or you're, you're, you're making your sacrifice, you know, to, at the temple. Uh, well, you know, again, it, what the tradition was to give the gods, again, extraterrestrials, the, the best and the first of all the first fruits. And they lived among us and they became uh, the elites. They became, uh, again, uh, those royal bloodlines. And what happened in, in North America was a lot of these tribes were tired of the oppression. So they rose up. And, and they eliminated the controllers that came down from the sky. They overthrew them and, and threw them off. And then what happens is uh, the ETs get wind of it, the controllers get wind of it, and they start the European conquest 
of the indigenous people of the Americas because they've the people in the Americas have had a revolution and overthrown uh, the Anunnaki and Draconian control grid. Many of them did, and you know this was pulling them back into the fold, and these wars have been ongoing. Mm-hmm. I, and you know, I'm pretty sure they took note of those indigenous tribes that were not easily controlled, those uh, indigenous tribes that just did not simply fall into line very well. And you know, a lot of people either did really, really, really good in school, and they were exceptional in school, and Maybe sometimes the government takes note of that, but the government also takes note of those who do very poorly in school, those who do not conform easily, those who are not, uh, you know, you can't really teach them very easily. You might give them the books and the information, but it bounces right off of them. And it bounces right off of them because somewhere deep inside, they know it's a load of BS. So uh, our government does definitely keep track of people that are like that on, you know, extremes. Um, And, you know, the Cherokee, the Creek, I mean, these were some of the indigenous that they weren't going to go for the conformity. So they didn't make very good slaves. So they had to be a little bit rougher on those and then do things like give them blankets that were covered in, you know, smallpox and take them on that trail of tears. So they had to do things to gain control. And there were a lot of ugly things. And I do believe that that karma is starting to come back around slowly, but surely. Yes, absolutely. So when I read that, it was like, oh my gosh, that makes so much, so much sense. And it resonates so perfectly, you know, again, bringing these people back into the fold. When we do look to uh, some of the ritualistic uh, nature and and dark nature of what happened in certain tribes with their bloody sacrifices, uh, those were already under this draconian uh, Anunnakian control. Um, But then some did shed their yoke some did overthrow the power structure and this is when they send in uh, a new uh, even tougher uh, power structure to come in and to reinforce it there's been many breakaway civilizations throughout the time of uh, the conquering of of what we call earth again which originally was Tiamat, when you look to the Dogen, they knew of a star that's not visible. They knew where it was. And this is, again, Sirius in the Sirius star system. They knew it before it was even discovered. And how did they have this knowledge? There are things, too, that were shared in the Hindu universe, uh, the Hindu cosmology, that were not discovered until recent times. And even even as far as the distance uh, and span as well as the shape of our galaxy itself. So obviously, you know, again, that knowledge came from the stars in the first place. And now we're seeing more and more wild, bizarre technology. This is going to be the time that's going to knock your socks off as far as the technology as all of a sudden uh, we're probably going to advance hundreds of years, at least proportionately to the way things have gone in the past in literally uh, a year or maybe two time <laughs> it's going to be mind-blowing you know the next in 10 years time it, we probably wouldn't even recognize everything about this planet from a technological standpoint and what we understand it's all going to change so rapidly now Lockheed Martin discussing developing a technology that functions like a skin and can grow on the exterior of a craft. Yeah, you know, now they're going to start to update us to the reality of the real technology out there. Again, weather control? No, it hasn't been around 80 years. It's been around forever since the beginning, since the recreation of, of Earth from the remnants of Tiamat. You know, we can do things simply, and in in uh, our, our neighborhood there, there is somebody that does this. Um, simply puts out a box, you just simply, and she doesn't even lock it, um, you know, you just simply put in, I think she's $3, $3 for a dozen, $4 for an 18-pack, and the same thing with the carton returns, and it's done on the honor system. 
and I always leave extra, you know, so I, I and I think the, the case is most people do leave extra. Look at the employee of the week. You know, we can get along. Our, our problem is not getting along. The problem is the leadership of the planet. And that's because this leadership is not terrestrial. They don't come from here. And, you know, for us, this is all we've had, so to speak, because, you know, many people, most people, perhaps haven't realized that, yeah, there's many other worlds out there. Here you have a picture of what it looked like in 2001, and this is 2019. This is one couple. This is insane, but it's beautiful. <laughs> Cindy says, this is what can Cindy, yeah, because we, we, we do that. We do. I mean, we've, we've had property that we have sold, that we have planted all sorts of fruit-bearing trees and bushes on multiple times. Um, you know, we had our property in the desert that um, basically we were lucky to sell it to a person that had the same vision and, and building an earth home down into the ground. And we had started with gardens over there, too. And, and we listened to the guides. So where the guides need us to go, we go. Uh, and we trust the guides, too. Um, even though it might seem illogical, we always listen to what the, the little voice says. And it's it always guides us in the right direction. So they planted 2 million trees in 18 years, returning 172 bird species, 33 mammal, 15 amphibian, 15 reptiles, 293 plant species. This is uh, Lilia Wanik and Sebastio Salgado. That's absolutely, as Billy Carson says here, being the change that we want to be. Man, what beautiful souls. That is just amazing. If, if one couple, I'm sure they didn't plant everyone by hand themselves, but, you know, help, help had a lot of help and probably some hired help can do this oh man we can make this place a paradise the, the, these kids are in iran this is uh el salvino and he's done some just really heartwarming pieces he's got 29.8 thousand subscribers yet this video has 353,000 views i've watched a couple of his videos that were i just think fa fabulous and this is what we need more of the brightness on the faces of these these school kids in Iran, it, they make it out like, you know, Iran is horrible. And yes, I, there's no real good governments when you get down to it uh, on the planet. Yet at the same time, maybe some are a little bit worse than others, for sure. And there are, are no truthful uh, mainstream news channels. There, there are none. They're, they all have agendas. Everything is sales. We have to realize that there's such a brightness to these kids. And obviously, um, when you watch this video, you'll realize that, again, I don't know how anybody could think the people of any country are dark and evil because the average people are not in power. It's the control system that's dark and evil. People want to get along. It, and the control system is not natural to this planet it's very warlike in fact again it originated on mars and mars was ruined by this control system i mean if you look at these little faces if you watch this video and we'll leave it in the links these faces are very bright these children are extremely expressive i mean there is nothing holding these children back there is no signs of <laughs> abuse here at all or tyranny i mean i you just don't see kids that are this clear and this happy. Yeah, that's the thing, too. And he was doing one in Yemen and showing the kids in Yemen. And, yeah, they're living a much harder life than we typically live here in the United States or maybe the U.K. But you know what? They look clearer. They look healthier. They seem more vibrant. And when Cindy looks at their energy bodies, they're, they're actually they're stronger than our energy bodies are. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought that was really interesting too. But it just goes to show what, what diet can do for you and the types of food you put in your body. And understanding that that food, you know, if it's poison, it's going to go in your body and it's going to create you 
I think it's really important that we just get used to blessing and charging our food because when that goes into our body, it's going to start interacting with our cell structures. It's going to start creating. It's going to start mixing with our DNA. It's going to start becoming us. It's going to become who we are. So the food and the blessing of the food, the kind of food, what's in the food becomes, I mean, more critical than you could imagine when it comes to the healing journey. Absolutely. You might ask yourself, you know, why are, why are we allowed to have GMO foods that other countries won't touch? Uh, why are we so laden with pesticides, you know, and, and how about the frequencies? They're not exposed to 5G. They're not exposed to uh, all these different childhood ouchy schedules. This is why they're clearer. This is why they're literally healthier. They're, their kids are, for the most part, um, you know, not as laden as ours are with all sorts of toxins and frequency lowering, lowering um, substances and frequencies that themselves are causing all sorts of harm to us. Well, why, why the U.S.? Because the U.S. has been the military force of, of the system. The main military force of the system is the United States. They need the people of the United States to be the most um, stupefied, the most lower frequencyed, uh, the most heavily medicated, the most pliable, the most, you know, again, we might, we won't view ourselves as this in this way because, you know, again, the patriotism and the ego, they stoke the ego by saying, you know, you are in the most powerful, wonderful country on the planet they feed us this, which uh, builds up our ego, gets us proud, ship us off to do their will in each of these countries, bring them into the fold where they can be useful and, and contribute to the, the power structure. When you look at um, <laughs> their, their banking structure there, that you don't find uh, international uh, MasterCards and Visas. You find that you have to use like 14 million of the local currency to equal like $100 US. They're not part of that Rothschild banking system, which ultimately you know, is a, a draconian reptilian banking system and so the war on the planet has been ongoing what we have to realize is they they just use us as a tool till they're ready to throw us aside and then they'll bring up another uh, country to step in place another people to to elevate and, and make them feel all puffed up with pride and ego and then ship them off and and have them be the military police force for the for the system this is all they do, but the average people of the, of the world, they just want peace and happiness. And so, you know, I, I think channels like his, where they go around and, and really uh, introduce us to the way people live, which is mostly very, very simply. Uh, and people, you know, again, it, most people want just peace and to enjoy the good things, you know, explore the different foods, explore the, explore the different cuisines and the ways of living and not be forcibly indoctrinated into any one belief system, whether it's been done at the point of a sword or a gun or whether it's been done, you know, through coercion, like, well, you know, it's too bad you're going to burn in hell forever because you don't have our dogma. You know, that is just, it, 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 there's no spirituality in that. That's just a simple tool of, of conformity. That's all. Mm -hmm. And 12 heavy metal detox foods. Uh, celery juice is great, but keep in mind if you're detoxing too fast you're, and your, your, your detox pathways are not open, you could get some backup grapes or wonderful wild blueberries, apples, cilantro, parsley. This, these are all things that are in our, in our diet. Uh, red radishes, plenty of garlic in this house. Um, dulce, uh, barley grass juice powder, spirulina, and zeolite. zeolite. Some foods that you can get in your system now, as long as they are not containing the heavy metals as well, you'll be in good shape. Oh, and this is always fun. Uh, let's see. 
proof everything is oh based on resonance oh and yes it, i i do this to my plants you know i <laughs> this well, is she, she does this to people every day too <laughs> people so. and it works on plants too so this really helps pattern people and it puts their energy body in a state of well where it's no longer confused and it's no longer chaotic and it just brings people back into resonance uh, everything that happens to you happens on the outside of you energetically. So all of your traumas, um, everything, everything, every owie on your body has started in your energy field. So if you can correct that energy field and if you can give your body all the things that it needs, you're going to come, you're going to heal. You're going to heal completely. Now, there are some things if the body is altered it might not be able to bring you back to completeness but it long enough given long enough depending on the trauma and the amount of tuning and the amount of patterning you are going to come back and be a new person so this really changes the way people live many times after we work on someone their life their lives change and and that's because that part of the energy field has been corrected and then you're able to understand the corrections that you need to make for you to bring yourself back to wholeness yes absolutely and if you have reached out um we've had a lot going on so i uh, gotta catch up with the uh, emails uh usually it'll take a couple weeks to get you scheduled and maybe a couple days to um, respond via email and you can see you know the world can make it mesmerizing, but we know we have friends that we can count on. And and the reality is we have family all around this world in every single nation because each nation is truly arbitrary and, and it's drawn up by the control system. Even though humans come from many different star systems to this planet and, you know, again, they'll they'll try to give you different reasons why uh, there are different quote-unquote races and shapes and sizes. I mean, we have pygmies that are three and a half feet tall, four feet tall in these times. We have tribes in the Amazon, too, that are very, very small and have been living in harmony with the uh, with the earth in a, in a way that most other people don't. And then we have, you know, giants at the same time, seven, seven and a half feet tall, occasionally somebody getting close to eight feet tall. And this is because, again, we don't all originate from here. And the earth was reseeded by what we will call the Galactic Federation with many other uh, extraterrestrial species after the destruction of Tiamat in this war, the war that is still ongoing to this day. Indeed. And so one more to give you guys here. Yeah, you know, he knows it could be scary dealing with reptilians, but we have each other's back. We have each other's back. And even with the reptilians, you know, um, for the most part, I would steer clear. Uh, although there are some that are um, recognizing the need to go along the ascension path as well. Just with any species, you will find people uh, inclined a little bit more towards the darkness and others more towards the light. But on the whole, again, humanity, we're, we're ready for ascension. We're ready for a change here. And really, it's just the uninformed people that don't understand uh, the bigger scheme of things because all the info that they've gotten is from the mainstream media, wh whether that mainstream media is MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, or whether it's the Bible and the Koran and the Talmud. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he's, he did a good job. He's ready for his treat. Absolutely. We got each other. Thank you guys so much for your support. Again, you could join us over on Patreon as little as a dollar a month. Uh, exclusive videos, and it does help us to move forward in trying to awaken the planet. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.